it is almost impossible now to look at the full weight of evidence and believe that there was no collusion. If there was no collusion, it will be astonishing. Not only has he failed to sanction or impose any kind of consequences on Russia for this egregious violation of international law, Donald Trump has continued his embarrassing campaign of deference and debasing himself before Vladimir Putin. He had had this information according to the Times, and yet he offered to host Putin in the United States and sought to invite Russia to rejoin the G7. He's in, his entire presidency has been a gift to Putin, but it, this is beyond the pale. It's a betrayal of the most sacred duty we bear as a nation, to protect and equip our troops when we send them in the harm's way. A damning indictment there from Joe Biden. Let's bring back Sarah from the White House. And Sarah, 24 hours after this story broke. Now, this really struck me that they waited 24 hours for the White House to finally issue a response, saying that the president and vice presidents were never briefed on this intelligence. That alone is a stunning statement, but many experts aren't buying it. There have been so many twists and turns in the saga about Donald Trump and the alleged Russian influence on the U.S. elections in 2016. The latest, of course, is that Donald Trump Jr., the president's son, met with the Russian attorney who reportedly has ties to the Kremlin. But no matter what happens, one thing has been consistent. Donald Trump, the president, blames all of this on the Democrats and calls it a hoax or fake news. In March, then FBI Director James Comey confirms that the FBI is looking into potential collaboration between the Trump campaign and Russians. I mean, this is, this is jaw dropping. This is like kind of sickening news, right? Even for those of us whose, jo whose, whose jaws are already sprained um, from having dropped so far and so frequently this summer. I mean, if this Times report is correct, this means that U.S. intelligence has concluded that Vladimir Putin is offering bounties for the scalps of American soldiers in Afghanistan. Not only offering, offering money to people who kill Americans, but some of the bounties that Putin has offered have been collected, meaning the Russians at least believe that their offering cash to kill Americans has actually worked to get some Americans killed. The Russians at least believe, if these bounties have been paid out, that the people to whom they have offered this money have successfully gone out and killed American soldiers because of it, and the Russians have therefore paid for that service. And President Trump was told about this in March, and he has done nothing. As foreign policy advisors, he named 30-year-old George Papadopoulos and Carter Page, who'd been identified by U.S. officials as a potential Russian spy. Were you in email chains with Papadopoulos? Uh, probably a few, yeah. Were you in email chains with him about Russia? It may have come up from time to time. Again, you know, there's nothing, nothing major, yeah. Soon after becoming a Trump advisor, Papadopoulos communicated with a professor in London who said Russians had email dirt on presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. And then what happens next is some Russian intelligence officer somewhere will pay off an Afghan warlord who's responsible for the death of that American. And the president of the United States knew about it, and he did absolutely nothing about it. In fact, what he did is reward Russia by helping them achieve their foreign policy aims with the withdrawal of American troops from Germany with their admission back into the G8. And to Jennifer Rubin's point, which I'm broadly indifferent to, and I don't know, in fact, what's worse, that he knew and did nothing or that he didn't know. The corruption, the indecency, the stench of this administration will linger through the ages. And everyone associated with it, who's been complicit, who's collaborated with it, who has defended the indefensible, the stench will linger around them too. The Tom Cottons, who have betrayed the very soldiers that he once led in combat through his complicit silence. The Lindsey Grahams, a reserve colonel in the United States Air Force. All of them. This is a disgusting moment in American history and in American life. For the first time, we have an American president who simply refuses to defend the country, 
the Constitution, kowtows and gets on his knees with deference to a hostile foreign powers autocratic leader. What a rancid moment in the life of the American nation. But to me, the most interesting part of all this by far is George Papadopoulos. Because what he says upends our timeline of what the Trump campaign knew about the Russian hacks and when they knew it. So Papadopoulos joined the Trump campaign in March 2016 as a foreign policy advisor. And almost immediately, he begins emailing with two Russian sources who have ties to Vladimir Putin's government. A couple months later in London, he meets with one of these sources, a guy known as, quote, the professor. And the professor tells him they, the, the Russians, have dirt on her. The Russians had emails of Clinton. They have thousands of emails. So this means that three months before the DNC's hacked emails were released, and more than six months before WikiLeaks released Clinton campaign chair John Podesta's hacked emails, before all of that, one of Trump's foreign policy advisors knew the Russians had thousands of Clinton-related emails. Now, we know all of this because in July, the FBI arrested George Papadopoulos as part of Robert Mueller's investigation into the Trump campaign's possible collusion with the Russian government. And the commander-in-chief has known for months that uh, Vladimir Putin and the Russians have put a bounty on their head to have them killed by Islamic militants. And the president of the United States does absolutely nothing about it. When, you know, when I saw that indictment of the 13 Russians and all its detail and whatnot, what leapt out at me is the same thing that leapt out at you, which is there's no discussion of the hacking and dissemination of the emails. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? I can tell you one thing. It's not because of a lack of evidence that the Russians did all this. There's abundant evidence that could have been included. Indeed, if that were the, going to be the end of the story, it would have been included because you'd want to make the most complete and powerful case against what the Russians did, and these two things complement each other. They explain the whole story, or a larger part of the story. So why don't you do it? You don't do it if you're not ready for some reason on that piece. Hmm. And it's not because they weren't ready on the Russian piece. It may be because they weren't ready on the collusion piece. That is, would U.S. persons be included in that conspiracy to defraud the U.S. and violate U.S. election laws? So. I don't know that Mueller's reached a conclusion about whether he can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt or not, but it seems to me that the reason you don't include that in the first indictment is you're still working on that part of the investigation. And it is almost impossible now to look at the full weight of evidence and believe that there was no collusion. If there was no collusion, it will be astonishing.